Thanks so much for tuning back into another episode of Imperfect Marketing. Today, we're going to be chatting through the life cycle of an email subscriber from the moment they hit that shiny subscribe button. If you lack creativity or it's the it's my guide and I want it now button to the inevitable unsubscribe that breaks our email love and hearts. We're going to explore the key stages and how to make the most of each one. So buckle up and get ready for a wild ride through the inbox. So the life cycle all starts with the subscribe, that magical moment when someone decides to take the leap and entrust you with their precious email address. And it is precious. It's like the first date of email marketing. You're excited. You're nervous. You're hoping that they'll like what you have to offer. Make sure your subscribe button or your form is easy to find, easy to use, and sets clear expectations about what kind of content they'll receive. You don't want to be the email equivalent of a catfish. (laughs) So once they've subscribed, you roll out the red carpet with your welcome sequence. This is your chance to make a stellar first impression and show your new subscriber what you're all about. Think of this as the honeymoon phase of an email, of email marketing. You want to woo them in with some of your best content, your most irresistible offers, and of course, your sparkling brand personality. Just don't come on too strong or you're going to scare them away faster than you can say unsubscribe. I was recently in LinkedIn and someone messaged me with a connection request and they were selling to me in the connection request. Well, that made it easy. I was glad that they weren't hiding anything and I did not accept that connection request. You've got to build relationships, right? So once you've won them over with your welcome sequence, and that could be anywhere from one to five emails, you want to keep the romance alive with your ongoing emails. That's where you're nurturing them. You're nurturing the relationship, providing them with valuable content, exclusive offers, and the occasional promotional email. If you're lucky, they might even take a step and make a purchase fairly quickly there. And that's like the email marketing equivalent of putting a ring on it. So just remember to keep things fresh and exciting, or you might find yourself in an email rut that's going to get you unsubscribed. And alas, all good things must come to an end. And sometimes that means facing the dreaded unsubscribe. It's a breakup of email marketing. It stings. You might be tempted to send, please, desperate, uh, don't leave me emails. But remember, it's not you, it's them. Maybe they're just not ready for a commitment to your brand. Maybe they found someone else's emails more irresistible and a better fit. And if you're really unlucky, they might pull a burger from the Sex in the City and break up you with you via a post-it note, or in this case, a blunt unsubscribe message. So just remember, Carrie picked herself up, dusted off her Manolo Blahniks, and moved on to bigger and better things. And so can you. Whatever the reason for the unsubscribe, I want you to make sure that your process is clear, easy, and graceful. You don't want to be the bitter ex of email marketing holding on to their email address like a worn out pair of Carrie's favorite shoes. Let them go and focus on the subscribers who still love you. And there will be plenty that still love you. So there you have it, the life cycle of an email subscriber. From the first chai, subscribe to the final and tearful unsubscribe. By understanding and optimizing each stage of the journey and as you evolve your business and company, it's going to help you create email campaigns that keep them engaged, entertained, and hopefully loyal to your brand. Just remember, in the world of email marketing, there are plenty of fish in the sea, So keep casting your nets, keep reeling in those subscribers, and keep moving forward with your email game. Until next time, happy emailing.